We've got a massive MPNFL Division 1 footy show tonight on Game Face, and undermanned Sorrento's accuracy wins them another close one as goal-kicking star Lee Paholke and young gun Shannon Gladman join us at the desk. And Lee's not too happy with me at the moment, so I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. The team they defeated, YCW, lament another one that got away as they grapple with the possibility of missing finals. Two in a row for Edith Vale Aspendale as Mornington Firm as favourites for relegation. And Rosebud storm into the top five and Bond Beach beat the inconsistent Bombers for some breathing space in the top five. So let's look at Swiss Locker first. Now's the time to make the move. Who's in charge of the apparel at your club, boys? Who is, Lee? As we say, welcome to you and also welcome to Shannon. Uh, Tom Langford does our apparel. Right. You, Casper and Mark. You happy with that? Uh, Mark. Mm -hmm. He, Mark. he Mark does Mark. a good job? Yeah. Very good. We look all right. Yeah, you look fantastic. You. What about you, Hulk? So, when, uh, who's in charge of your apparel at home? Your wife or you? It out and I just chuck it on, mate. Are you, are, are you happy with it? Not really, but you're what not. Are you do? Well, Swiss Locker will be in touch very soon if you're not happy to organise a time to meet and show all the latest gear available. Your club should do the same. Don't wait until next year. Get in early and make sure your apparel requirements are taken care of by Swiss Locker. As we said, we've got. Shannon Gladman, we've got Lee Pahokey with us. Now, Shannon, you've got a little bit of a nick above the eye. What happened there? Yeah, mate. Um, uh, Dan Hughes from YC gave me a little bit of an elbow just to say how I was going in the last quarter. He's so. a clumsy brute, isn't he? <laughs> He's a big fella too, yeah. Would have been all accidental. Oh, yeah, of course. All love after the game. Yeah, no, it was all good. Just a bit of glue in it after the game. Missed the, missed the bottle run at the end of the day, so it was all good. <laughs> well, you, that, that's good. You could sit back and yeah. enjoy a terrific win. It was a, another mm. great result for the club, and you're having a wonderful season yourself. Yeah, oh, happy with how the club's going, how, how we're going, sitting on top still, just. Um, so, yeah, pretty happy with myself as well at the moment. Very good. I didn't even ask him that one. <laughs> What, about how well he's going? He's pretty happy with himself. You are talking yeah. about he's, he's happy with himself the whole time. He is. I'll talk from yourself, mate. <laughs> where, do you think, where do you think you've improved the most, Shannon, with your footy? Um, I don't know. I think just playing more games, you get a bit more confident and start to see where your role in the team is a bit more. And Yeah, I think I think I'm just just know where I fit in the team at the moment. So, yeah, it's, it's working out pretty well. through the midfield? Um, look, I've always had a fair bit of time in there. With the boys going away to Europe and stuff, it helps a yeah. bit. There's... Less, um, less boys running through the midfield, so there's a lot um, having a lot of time in there at the moment. So have you heard from? Nice. Uh, I talk to them every now and then. They're pretty busy. Uh, probably eating bread and drinking <laughs> beers. I would think. So. <laughs> Where are yeah. they? Are they? Oh, I'm not sure at the moment. Just got to yeah. Amsterdam. Yeah. Right. Very so good. Zachy Ooh. Burns looks like a loaf of bread. <laughs> yeah, he is, is he? looking thick. <laughs> he, he's having a great time. So tell us about your junior club, Shannon. Um, yep. I, I was at Sereno pretty much whole junior career. Right. Right through. Excellent. And uh, what do you do outside footy? Do you get a chance to uh, enjoy the good things in life? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I try to try enjoy myself a bit. I just actually finished uni, so getting a bit of time off at the moment to do some things, yeah. What are you studying? Uh, teaching, so teaching. Yeah, PE teaching, oh, yeah. So, yeah. Teacher. Yeah, there's yeah, plenty of them out there. They always whinge too. And they've, 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 become, weeks off they've become they've become coaches in the end. Would you like to be a coach down the track, Shane? Ah, uh, maybe we'll see how we go. See how I'm feeling at the end of, <laughs> end of my career. Hopefully, I've got a bit of time left. And uh, how do you think the team's travelling overall? It's been a pretty good year, I would have thought, despite all the obstacles that have been placed in front of you with all the injuries at the moment and, and players being away. Yeah, look, I, I think we're doing pretty well. I think we're all pretty happy with how we're going. There's been boys who have come in, had to step up, and, uh, and I think they have been, which is really, really good to see. And, and fresh faces getting in the side, getting a crack, and it's, yeah really are positive down at Sereno at the moment. Now, Lee, you know uh, that you are one of our favourites here at Game Face. You're having just one of these outstanding years. You're just dominating the goal kicking. Uh, and I wasn't part of the list to pick the top 35 best players at the start of the year. You were 31. I would have had you much higher than that. You'd be top 10 easily at the moment. Are you in career best form? Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> she's going back, to, <laughs> going back to early 20s. I was a lot uh, quicker and uh, fitter then, but I think now more opportunity. There's no other key forward, um, no Dorsey or Benny Swartz or these guys um, down there. So I'm probably getting the footy kicked me a lot more now than what I was previously, which you know results in more opportunity, more goals. And you just seem confident. Every time you've got the ball in your hands, uh, you're going to kick a goal. I mean, do you get a chance oh. to do a lot of practice on your goal kicking? Do you no, pass many off? No, no. Well, <laughs> I, before the weekend, I actually kicked 15 points in three weeks. So goal kicking was on the was on the menu, and it come close to. 
Um, you know, probably affected us against Pines, probably should have been further up. Mm. Um, but inaccurate kicking cost us. Then on the weekend, we had a big emphasis on it. Um, and the boys kicked really well, which in turn probably stole us one that we shouldn't have. Did you suck up the people when they come on the show? You turn straight I know, we away. Haven't, we, yeah. haven't <laughs> we haven't got there yet. We haven't got there. Can I ask a question? You can ask whatever right, you want. The injury list. So we've got, um, obviously, a few big names that are gone. Uh, ACL to uh, James. Yep. So he doesn't look good. Um, Hammy to Sam Gibson. Yeah. Is that, that's a huge one if that's... Is that a year? Or, like, is that for the rest of the year or is he it a avo- chance? He avoided surgery. So yeah. Was it tendon, a, was it? Yeah, so that's, that's a real positive. I think if yep. it was surgery, it was all over. Yeah. Um, but no surgery... He's going to be a suck and seat. Yeah. Just have to wait. Okay. Maybe really late, round yeah. 17, round 18. Sounds like a good uh, story come finals time. Oh, hopefully. But, um, yeah, we don't know. We just yeah. don't know how he's going to react. He's never had a serious injury before. Yeah. So. Because he's been amazing, particularly at North Melbourne. He, he played 132 games in a row without missing from debut. It was an amazing career, wasn't it, at North Melbourne? Yeah, it's 130. I don't think anyone's played 132 games in a row. James may have got close before. The weekend, but you know, at that level too, to play mm. that you know such high standard and high impact yeah. to not get injured. Jared Crash yeah. played 194 oh, thanks, from the boo for Sydney, and then he actually, his body actually wasn't right from an Achilles injury, and then he hardly when he took some time off in the middle of 2006. Paul Roos said, "You're not playing well. Your body's not great. You've got to take some time off," and he did. And I think he played 26 in the next five or six seasons. So it can have an effect on you. I'm not saying that that. Because because Sam trying to done his hand, yeah. but he sort of he <laughs> sort of <laughs> it, it, it can have an effect, can't it? If you play a lot of footy in a row, can't it? How's it? What was it about? <laughs> well, no, well, well, Crouchy played 194 in a row, oh, and then he and then he oh just kept coming back when he wasn't quite 100 yeah. percent fit. So I, I want to know Nicky Marston how far away is he? Close, <laughs> close yeah. after the bye. Good. Yep. So he's he he going to get him back. He went on yeah. to the Grampians on the weekend, missed the game. Yep. Um, so he's come back a few kilos. Heavy year old Nicky boy, he'll but be, he's chomping at the bit. He'll be handy. He's, he's flying around. Three or four weeks yeah. now at training. Yeah. Um, so he'll be back after and the bye. Because you need key defenders now oh. that uh, Luke Brigden's gone down. That was obviously noticeable in the last quarter against Pines, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Really? Luke, Just, uh, Luke's turned. Jeez, he's been impressive this year. He has. Say that too. How good's Jai Lloyd been down there? Yeah, he was awesome. terrific against uh, yeah, Pines. Super. I thought he played Fantastic. really well. Yeah. Had a me time, Jai. Yeah. On Saturday night, he was. <laughs> oh, and then he was seen Sunday morning yeah. running into a cafe. So <laughs> yeah. he likes a bit of me time, old Jai. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. How's your body? Good. No drugs. It was good against Pines? Oh, it probably wasn't great against Pines. Um, Tell us about um, the <laughs> shot at goal you were going to take and didn't take. I was never going to take it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I heard you were pretty annoyed about that. I, what's the mic? Well, I thought it was a bit uns- Yeah. Yeah. Look, it was Otherwise because that. because uh, you <laughs> didn't leave the ground originally, and then you left the ground. And you came straight back on. It's the rules. Yeah, I know it's the rules. But why but why did you not why, why did you not take the it, kick though? You didn't I, know it, I you didn't know originally that you had to go off, and then because you took a while to go off, and then you eventually went off. Yeah. But uh, well, if you if you have only gone off for a matter of seconds, and uh, you must have been injured if you couldn't take the kick, correct? Well, the injury affected my kicking. I couldn't kick. But you could still run and chase. I could run and chase. Well, not chase, but I could run, but I couldn't kick. Right. That's why I went off. And then you came back on straight away as soon as, as soon as the goal had been kicked? Yep. You don't think that it was slightly unsportsmanlike? Would they have rules to allow unsportsmanlike? Uh, no, they don't. No, it was within the rules. It was, it was within the rules. I understand it was within the rules. No, no dramas with that. But do you, did you feel slightly guilty about the way you went about it? No. You didn't? No. If it's okay. in the rules, then it's in the rules. So. What, do you, what do you think, Hulk? Are you going to help me here or are you going to leave me uh, flying <laughs> by the seat of my pants? I've got more important uh, points to talk about, mate. I zoned out a little while ago. Fair enough. Uh, and what about uh, yeah, um, Luke Tapscott and, and Bo Henry? But Bo Henry actually ran up to the uh, coach's box, didn't he? Got that. I thought it was wonderful theatre. I think when you two play each other, I just think it's wonderful for the game. It's become a great rivalry in such a short space of time, Pines and Serrano, hasn't it? It has. It has. Just pity they've beaten us four in the trot now. Um, they're a bit of a bogey side for us, but you just can't seem to get over it. But yeah. um, I think everyone likes seeing us play, and you know we enjoy playing them. To you know, probably. Um, in terms of contest and aggressiveness, it's probably the top uh, the top team for that. You know, YC, the game we played against YC on the weekend was amazing. It was a as good a 
quality game as you'll see. Yes. And after the after the game, we have you know, twenty two blokes standing around having a chat for probably five to ten minutes on the ground, all into you know interacting and mingling. Good. Um, so with them, we've got a really good rivalry. But then the Pines one's probably on the other side. Mm. As soon as the game's finished, the boys shake hands and then we'll probably go our separate ways. Right. But it's just as entertaining. Do you want to have a better relationship off the field with Pines, or are you not too worried about that? It's a long way from Sorrento. I'm not, probably not going to catch up and have a beer with, <laughs> beer with them too often, am I? But, I mean, after the match, you might. It's nice if they come into your rooms or you go oh, into their rooms. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, so okay. there's still beers. We, um, I know a few of the Pines boys pretty well. Um, Fisher, the boat um, I play on him. We get along. We have yeah. a beer all the time. Had a beer with him at the pub last year. Um, at Sorrento, you know, obviously Bongo's a great fella. He is. Um, everyone that I've had a bit of time with, you know, Pines, I've got along with no dramas. Can you win the grand final? They're on I, top, Dan. I can't see why not. Mm. They're on top, Dan. Is that a loaded question? Can't, Come on, Dan. Do you think we can win it? I think you... You count us out, Dan. I, no, I'm not, I'm not counting <laughs> you out, oh, Shannon, at all. Oh, oh, I'm, oh, just ask, I'm just asking oh, the question. Oh, yeah, I, think can, I think you can. I think you can. But were you but. just a bit concerned with all the injuries you had that the last quarter sort of fell away? You were very good for three quarters against Sorrento. Obviously, very good last week. That was a it's mighty awesome. win against YCW as well. Very good win. Uh, against Pines, I should say, you're very good for three quarters and then they got on top in the last quarter. If you get everyone back, I think you're a massive chance. You've got this great self-belief channel around the club, haven't you? Yeah, we do. Um, I mean, like, being out with, there with the boys, I don't think at any stage any of us count ourselves out, even if we're down 24 or 20 points, 30 points in the last quarter. All the boys, you know, you look around and you have belief in the team and I think that's a really, really good thing we've got going down there. Yeah. Can I ask you, you had one of the uh, one of the guys that I've got a lot of time for back this week, Chad Harris. He's come back from Richmond. I reckon he could nearly make it. I reckon that he's that close to probably an AFL list or a rookie list next year. He's starting to make some inroads at Richmond. Uh, what have you heard through from him? He's awesome. I actually wrote him off. I coached him around the 16s yeah. and I said he'll never play senior footy. Oh. Um, so that Why? Back. Oh, he was lazy and lethargic and um, you know he had a bit of attitude his best mate to my brother so I, had a, I was really close with him and he just you know he didn't try or anything like that and then he is now what, he, on the weekend he's chased down tackle <laughs> he's, he's just everywhere yeah so but, yeah. won us a game from a chase down tackle where a bloke marked the ball ran into an open goal and you know had 20 yeah. metres on Chad chase down the point but he's quick yeah. Yeah. he's hard he reads the ball well he's got good skills he looks like he's in favour up there now, like he's getting that game. Mm. Um, so there's a real chance second half of the year to get that exposure and, and sort of do something next year. So I don't know if you'll see him for the next couple. Wouldn't be surprised if he does find his way onto yeah. it. Yeah, least. 100%. T- um, talking of your brother, how's he travelling over in Adelaide? He's Still going right. It? Yeah. Um, yeah, he's playing really well on the twos. But going just well got, on the Sanford, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah he really is. Well. Just yeah. got no injuries. Yeah. So yeah. there's not many spots uh, on that team at the moment. No, they're, they're going pretty well. They started finding some form. How long has he been over there for now? This Four years? Third, third, third season. Third, third, yeah. 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 yeah, no, I was asking about him on the weekend and all the reports back were he's playing really good footy. Yeah. Now, 38 for the maximum 40 points in rega- regard to recruiting uh, and the salary cap. So you were pretty close, weren't you, to your 40 points maximum. Does that happen often, Lee? Uh, couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. It doesn't. Uh, it hasn't affected us this year. We haven't right. had to change the team due to points, um, and I presume we won't. Did it happen last year? No, no. We were even less last year. Right. So there's, there's one guy on that list that I think you can get more out of too, uh, with the injuries that you had, Jake De Pasquale. He's a good player. I don't reckon he's playing up. To I thought he was terrific stand. against Pines. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think he's got a lot more in him than what he's been dishing out lately. Do you reckon he's got a bit of improvement? In- I, he's been crook. Has so he? he hasn't been able yeah. to run. So yeah. he was real crook Saturday pre-game. Yeah. Um, you know, not sleeping very well and just looked very, you know... Looked a bit trained. like Dan. Looked a bit like Dan. <laughs> um, wasted. So... Um, <laughs> so I think... Fair you know, get, you know, On this little bit of flu, whatever he's got, um, he's got some serious X Factor. Oh, oh sorry, mate. Come on. Yeah, I know. No, mate, we're just mucking around, around, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> now, what about YCW? It must have been a hell of a game. Of that, you think they're cooked? They're that many inside fifties. They thirty scoring shots to twenty. And that's been they the probably year, yeah, right? not and kicking straight. Kick but, but that was a much better performance. They were very poor against Bond Beach the previous week, but it must have been a, a terrific contest, Lee. And they really took it up to you, didn't they? They were fantastic, weren't they? They were. Yeah. Well, every game we play with them, it's, it's within a goal. Well, apart from the first one last year, obviously when we got spanked. 
Then your mum, Dan. Yeah, it'll be my mum. No, Dan, it will be. Just let it go. Look at their next five. Um, Probably have them to win three or four of those. Yeah. If they play the way they played on the weekend, they'll win three or four of those. And if they kick straight, it's, yeah. uh, you know, they would have beaten us by six goals on the weekend if they had taken their chances. Yeah, I agree. They're really good. We'll yeah. get Hutcho back next week or the week after, mm. I think, as well, which would be handy. But Streety will go. He'll go back yeah. to Richmond. He was really good. Yeah, he, he was just, yeah. And played midfield. Did he? Yeah, he yeah. played midfield. Wow. Richmond. He played on me last year round one. Yeah. And I barely got near it. Yeah. Then he'd come back when we played him later in the year and played forward, forward and kick four. Yeah. And then on the weekend, he started in the midfield and yeah. had heaps yeah. of... Yeah. He's been running for over at uh, Richmond. Has he? He's a, Has he? He's a gun, mate. He's yeah. six foot Yeah, you've four. been talking <laughs> about him as a, a player <laughs> that could make it. You yeah. have. No, did you? Yeah. Which took us about three quarters to realise that he does not kick on his right foot. He sold us that much candy. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. All day. Yeah, they've just got to find a way to, to get some wins at uh, YCW, but uh, it's going to get harder and harder, although the percentage is very good. Now, the SPT tracker, uh, SPT, a big part of our team this year. We've loved having them on board as Shannon. one of our key sponsors. Matt LaFontaine is on top. Shannon Gladman is second. Yeah, you're doing a lot of running, Shannon. No, it's quick. Oh. And you're very quick, aren't you? I think I must have been slow that day. I've got laugh for every day of the week, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must be if this bike's yeah, only half a K behind. Yeah. <laughs> He's <laughs> hitting. You were a bit surprised about that, weren't you? Oh, as a forward, though, you get to hit your top speed. Yeah. So, on a wheel, you do get to hit your top speed. I've it's with the wind, too, isn't it? A downhill <laughs> So I've no doubt that um, yeah. well, one of them might probably push him here. <laughs> but well, no doubt uh, these boys, if they were to do a 100-metre sprint, they would top out. Way quicker than that. We saw Luke Delmo at uh, top speed, didn't we, when he took on you guys a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, he's, a he's a very good player playing in the midfield. So he's up there too in the in the top eight. And uh, Luke Potts and uh, Jake Di Pasquale as well. Now, uh, I've got some injury reports. Uh, not some good news for Dramana. Uh, Bateman, shoulder out for two to three weeks. And this is where their depth their lack of depth might start to affect them, Hulks, after losing on the weekend. Dean War's got it back. He's gone for four to five. Kane Hughes, a hamstring out for a couple. Sean Clark, a shoulder, gone for the season. Uh, now, Majok Puok, uh, he's got an ankle injury out for two to three weeks. Ryan Smythe, haven't been able to find out exactly, but there's a heart complaint there, week to week proposition at the moment. And he's been playing some really good footy off half back. Saw him play really well against Pines about a month ago and wish him all the best there. Jay Hutchison, a knee, there'll be a scan on that. And Matt Gahan, he's been having all sorts of uh, problems with his hip. He's out for two weeks. At Pines, uh, Chewy Scanlon's a couple of weeks away with the ankle. Troy Jacobson, one to two weeks. And Harry Lewis Smith, who got injured for Port Melbourne a fortnight ago, he's out for a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, Martello at Edith Vale Aspendale, who we had on the show last week, is out for three weeks as well. Now, talking of EDS, two in a row. Mornington favourite for relegation, you'd have to say now, Hulks. Edith Vale Aspendale, it was a, a tight win. They found a way again. Their last quarter's a bit better. They've won three and lost seven, but they've still not been all that impressive, have they? Well, I said at the start of the year, Mornington were going to get relegated. It's over the line now. They're not going to get back. So Edith Vale might pinch one or maybe two on the way back. Their, their win on the weekend wasn't ultra impressive. It was a pretty scrappy game. And they're probably carrying five or six blokes who you think are just about done. Mm. Um, Martello was good before he did his ankle. Warwick Miller did his hammy at Mornington. He's going to be out for two or three weeks, which is not going to help them. Yeah, the goose uh, said to me that uh, that might have cost them in the end, I think. Yeah, but they just they haven't... We've been saying it all year. They haven't got that real class top end player that can take you over the line in the mm. last quarter of games. They're in it the whole way, but then when it comes to the last quarter, they sort of run out of legs or turn over the ball or whatever. And it just it showed on the weekend and look it's not it's not good um, to go down and get relegated, but it's where they're at. So that's uh not yeah. what you do. Well, they played with 29 player points on the weekend out of a maximum of 41. So they're obviously pretty young and uh, they're using a lot of players from within the club. Um, first time in the club's history. I mean, you're a Mornington boy. How, how much would it hurt them? 133 years uh, cricket or football. So the cricket club hasn't been down either. So it's the first time uh, either club's been relegated. There's a lot of people hurting up there. But again, it, the writing's been on the wall for a couple of months that that might be the case. So... It's just more reality now that it's going to uh, probably happen and just got to get on with it and hopefully prepare for next year so that they can get some recruits through and get more games into the kids, teach them how to play properly and turn it around next year. Look what Gringle and Chelsea and Lange and all that are trying to do. Mm. In the same boat. They played you guys a couple of weeks ago, Lee. 
They're with the teams for at least a half, aren't they? They just seem to fall away a bit, don't they? They weren't a relegation team when we no. played them. We were, no, scores were level at three quarter time. Yeah. yeah. And then we did run over them. But, um, yeah, they were, it was on for three quarters. Did yeah. they kick five goals to nil against you in the yeah. first quarter? No. Uh, no, I don't think so. But no, that's not that, yeah. Yeah. It's not like you They go hard with teams. It's just, yeah, it's just finishing off. Yeah. It's just can't do it. And like you guys, say you have a few injuries that go through, but you can get over the line in those close ones. I think you've probably won three under a kick this year, have you? Or two, two or yeah, three under a kick? Yeah, sounds about right, I think. Yeah. So that's where the top-end talent comes in, that you can drag people over, like, like the Chad Harris chase down, like a goal in the last 30 seconds, uh, midfield clearance from Mitch and get it down to you. So that's what good teams do, and they just don't have the players to be able to do it. No, it's, uh, it's just an area they, they need to work on. Hopefully they can for next year. Now, guys, this is a serious question, uh, and these... Uh, people among our uh, favourite or one of our very key sponsors. Who do you bank with? I'm with Bendigo. Yeah. Bendigo. Uh, if I had any money, I'd be with Bendigo. <laughs> you don't have any money? <laughs> <laughs> don't have <to> work? <laughs> no, what do you do with your money if you, if you work and you don't have any money? Uh, you know, beers on the weekend, pretty popular. Oh, you are very popular. I've heard He's that. Now, got a bag of cash weight from in his bag. Yeah, yeah, I'm so sure he does, uh, no doubt. Now, Bendigo Bank donate 20% of all profits back to local community. Gameface just changed all their banking over to Bendigo Bank. And if you'd like to show your appreciation for all the great work that Bendigo Bank do for the local community, especially sport, change your banking over to them right now. If your bank isn't doing the right thing by you, change to one you can feel better about. Now, Rosebud storming into the top five. You had Nick Jewell as a coach, and uh, he's really got them playing well. They lost two games in recent weeks by narrow margins, which could be the difference between them being in the five at the end of the year or not. But uh, what's he like as a coach, Nick? He's a good coach, yeah. I think he gets he gets the best out of um, everybody on the list. So that's been clear with Rosebud. You know, maybe started slow, um, but once he, he was able to hone them in um, after three or four games of his of his game style, he'll get the best out of the boys. And we're seeing maybe you look at their list and you don't see you don't see that much. Mm. But you know they've got some really quality players. If Sean Downey's not the top three players in the league, um, it's been a great year, he's, isn't he? He's, yeah. You know, he's awesome. Yeah. And he's been start. best on against us every time for three years now, I reckon. Because, Shannon, they've lost to you by 90 points. They were good in the first half early in the season, I think on Easter Saturday. Yep. And then you played them a couple of weeks ago and you got over the line by one point. Where have they improved? They yeah. had a big last quarter. They stormed over the top of you. Yeah, look, it kind of seemed like it was going the same way in the third of that of that game, and then their fire pack in the last quarter, they were all over us. We couldn't get near the ball. They were just, you know, they were hitting, hitting inside kicks and, and things like that. They had a bit more belief as well, I think. Last time, they kind of seemed like they gave up a little bit in the last quarter. It's probably, you know, the team getting to know each other a bit better and stuff. So, yeah, no, they've, they've improved uh, immensely. And they've got a good draw, Chris, haven't they, coming home? They've played Sorrento twice, Dramana twice, and they've got five of their last seven at home. Yes, they do. Uh, speaking to someone from an AFL, one of the big five AFL clubs in Melbourne, they're seriously looking at Sean Downey for next year. Uh-huh. Whether or not that's list or to join their VFL or rookie, they're looking very close to that in. Wow. But as I was having a discussion during the week, he's in the same boat as probably Sammy Gertz. Those two, I reckon, are stand out young midfielders in the comp at the moment. So whether or not they want to do it, because now's the time they've got to do it. Mm. So they've got to either go, yep, we're going to go have a year or two of VFL, or if they don't sort of go this year, next year, that's it, they'll be local footballers for the next 10 years. Good ones at that. Do you, know, do you know if Sean wants to do it? I mean, you're yeah, coaching that's, in Italy, that's the thing, because both of them are in the same boat. I, I don't know if their heart's in going through that path, which is fine. Oh. Some people don't. Who cares? But um, uh, I, I, my gut feel is they'll probably both stay and play local footy. But, yeah, they've got every uh, right to us. Yeah. I mean, I, I would love them to, to, to go. I mean, I would, I'd lo- love to see someone with an opportunity yep. take that opportunity. Now, massive game for Rosebud this week against Bond Beach on Saturday. Now, Bond Beach are going OK. Uh, both teams have got poor percentages, so they need yep. to look at their percentage. But then again, I suppose if you keep winning, it doesn't matter that much, does it? Bond Beach are going all right. Don't worry about mm. that. They've lost a couple of games where we thought they should have won and got the mm. pants pulled down. Yeah. I think it was you guys pulled their pants down when they'd won a few in a row and yeah. really give them a hide. And, did. And, yeah. um, but 
this is those games. We're going to have a heap of these in that last little bit where you've got Rosebud, Germana, Bomb Beach, um, Franks and Bombers, all those YC who are all competing for that last few spots. It's going to be a cracker. You've got to win these games. You certainly do. It's a, it's a terrific comp, boys, isn't it? I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's tight every week. You don't know who's going to win. You've got to oh, basically... Yeah. Uh, well, I know, oh, except yeah. for you, Chris. Yeah. Basically, uh, if you don't turn up, Lee, you're in a bit of trouble, aren't you? I think there's going to be a lot of eight-point games come this back after the year. Yeah, um, with that fourth to seven. Fourth yeah. to seven. Um, yeah. And I still think YC, are, you know, they're going to storm home. Mm. Um, too proud of club with too many big names to, to not have some charge at some stage. So I think... Uh, there we go, there's the ladder now. What about uh, the Bombers? I mean, uh, Bo Mustin still believes when he gets them all back yep. and they're missing a number of key players. Yeah, they missed 13 from Saturday. Correct. They've uh, been yeah. screaming about it all year. Yeah. And I've sort of been a little bit harsh on them, but I just see the, what they can do when they've got a list on the, on the ground. They can go with anyone. They beat you guys over there. You guys are flat though that day. I don't know whether or not. Uh, they played super, or you guys are flat, but they can beat anyone, Bombers, when they get them back through. Well, they've got Ben North over with a knee back in the next few weeks. Yeah. Bo, Mun Bo Munston's hoping he can get him back. Bo Munston's yeah. hoping he can get himself back and fit, but he's got this foot injury. He's not sure, though. Yeah. Uh, Jack Blake, he's got a foot injury. Um, Jared Bowman's got a finger injury. Jake Batchelor will be back. Uh, they think at this stage that it's going to be hard to get uh, Harnett back. Although he probably has qualified for enough games, but he mightn't play many more games. Yeah, in, it, yeah well, I think he has, but I don't think no. they'll they'll have him for the next few weeks because he's playing great footy at Frankston at they'll the moment. They'll need him to qualify for finals. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, really? he's but, a cracker, but he was fantastic a couple games. of weeks ago. But looking at the ladder, Sorrento on top, then Pines, followed by Dramano, had their first loss in the last six. Bond Beach and Rosebud making up the top five ahead of the Frankston Bombers on percentage, then YCW and Mount Eliza with good percentages put on 16 points. What do you reckon of Mount Eliza? Yeah, no, I brought them up a month ago and I said that they were in a fair bit of trouble. Um, I don't... I like... Uh, well, I don't like them, but I think they're in a little bit of trouble. Um, they've worked out Turnbull. So Turnbull's been tagged the last three weeks. I think uh, Ash went in last week and I think... Uh, Chevrolet did against YC and yeah. he got shut down. Tennant's a little bit sore. They don't know whether to put him forward or back because they can't kick a goal. Yeah. The midfield's still unreal. And the kids are cracking. Small park, DeWitt, mm. some really good kids, but they don't look like they're playing good teams. Well, a few of them didn't play against uh, the Bombers, which didn't help their cause. No, but I, I just don't think they're going that well at the moment. So those 50-50 games, I'm, I'm inclined to go against them. On the ladder there, it uh, seems interesting to point out that four of the... Top six sides are so-called Divi two sides. Knew yeah, this was coming. Well, that just in, that, that that just indicates what a great comp it is. Yeah, or maybe a few people got the uh, standard of comps. Uh, maybe our comp wasn't that bad after all. Wasn't that bad? It just wasn't as good as the other one, mate. That was about it. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't I wasn't there when uh, you had the Nepean and Mornington competitions, no. but. There were, uh, sorry, the Peninsula and Nepean yep. competitions, but were there a lot of one-sided games in the Nepean? Were there, there too was, many one-sided yeah, games? Just as many in Peninsula. Yeah, there was. 100% there was. I just think okay. that the teams that have gone up there, you guys included, and you've put in Rosebud, Franks and Bombers, um, Germana, they've improved a lot. Like, they've improved a lot. The standard of the comp's gone through the roof. As some of the Division One sides or the Peninsula sides back then haven't really progressed as quick as what these guys have. Um, and it's showing. They're doing some great stuff. I think four years ago, I still think Peninsula was the better division. But now, obviously, these sides are coming on in leaps and bounds. Did that annoy you that Nepean was seen as Division 2? It didn't annoy us when we played in it because yeah. you can't control where you play. Um, but we thought it was a bit rich when we come up and everyone starts potting your premierships. And uh, maybe now... Those premierships are worth a bit more to some people when they see the ladder. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> premierships are premiership. I mean, well, that's right. I don't know, it's, it's as much people potting it as it was. And you guys showed last year when you come up, and that was one of the best grand finals we've seen for 15 years. So that's what you want to see, the best sides play against what? the best sides. And that's what we saw. It was cracking. I mean, there were a lot of people I know who have been involved in the AFL and have been involved in amateurs. They went down and saw that game. Yeah. And uh, in other competitions, they thought it was one of the best games of footy you've seen all year, full stop. Yeah. It was, it was such a great advertisement for our game, such a great advertisement for the competition indicating the divisional football. Yeah. 
is here to stay. People have gone back and they haven't watched footy for a couple of years local and they've come back and they've commented on how the standard has just gone through the roof and how good the footy is and it's it's been great. Last two years it's just been super. I spoke to a couple of Edith Vale Aspendale officials when we were down there calling the women's football on Friday and we thank the club for looking after us, are fantastic. And I said, how do you think your senior team's going? And they said, well, actually, we think they're going all right. They're just in a very good competition. Yeah. It's a very good competition and uh, everyone should be really proud of it at the moment. As should this man next to me, Lee Pahulke, dominating the goal, kicking, he'll win it. He's 14 in front, unless he gets injured, but I don't think he's going to get injured. Even if he's injured, he still plays. Uh, he kicked five last week to be on 51. Jackson Calder having a good year with the bottom team, Mornington, on 37. Trent Dennis Lane, four to move to 30. He's kicked nine in the last two weeks. Ethan Johnson kicked four despite Dramana losing. He's on 22. As is Sam Fowler, who didn't kick any on the weekend. And uh, Joe Fisher remains on 19. He kicked two in the big win the previous week for Bond Beach. Now, next week's tips, Mount Eliza and Sorrento. Now, Shannon, why would you beat Mount Eliza? Oh, we're in good form. We're getting, still getting players back. And uh, bloke next to me is kicking a few, few goals every week, which is handy. So, yeah, we'll, I reckon we'll get there quite easily this weekend. I'm confident. Yeah. Who goes to you against Mount Eliza? No idea. Gilly? No? Not no sure? Idea. No idea. Docky. Dockety, Mike. No, he's been playing forward a lot these days, Docko. So they've got some good, got some good backs. They just can't kick goals. No, I played on some. Um, Mount Eliza bloke got me around the year. And you stayed on me the whole day. So I dare say I'll, uh, I'll hope in again. Okay. I'll back you, blokes. Do you go out there thinking you can kick four or five every single game, the way you're going at the moment? Ten, Dan. He gives you kick ten. Mm. I try to, but you don't go out there thinking it. Um, it's more about just trying to make Shannon the most of the ball properly. Just do it. Well, you're yeah, certainly right. making the most of your opportunity. <laughs> Spray him if you don't kick the ball properly. No, little Shan's good. He's, uh, <laughs> he's the only one that doesn't kick the ball 65 metres to you. Mid- Shan loves his little 30 metre passes with the midget leagues, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> The mids, ah. the mids and Polks have a good relationship. He yells at us, we yell at him. Oh, you know, correct. It <laughs> goes, goes well. That's, right. That's why we love him, the showman. Yeah. Now, Frankston Bombers hosting Dramana. Vital game for the Bombers. They just have to win this. Yeah, but they're depleted still. So yeah. whether or not they're going to have another close loss and use the injuries as an excuse or they're going to have a crack at home and put two in a row against Dramana, I tend to lean toward Dramana bouncing back. Yeah, I think Dramana can. Uh, but I honestly believe the Bombers are good enough if they get everyone back. It's just a matter of if they've got enough wins on the board to so be there. Who are you tipping? I think the Bombers at home. Oh, the Bombers even at home. Ha- m- missing a lot. Does the ground slow Germana down? Because I can't imagine that Frankston oh, ground being too good a nick after the last sloppy. couple of weeks. It's a sloppy yeah. ground, isn't it? Does that slow them down a bit? Um, not Germana. enough. Germana? Not enough. Mm. I don't think it slows them down enough. I'll go Frankston. They've got a lot of injuries at the moment, Jermaine. I'll go Jermaine. And they like yeah, yeah. Fair enough. 50 <laughs> 50. <laughs> YCW and Mornington just YC. have to win YC, don't they, boys? Oh, yep. Yeah. And they will. Yeah. Uh, Rosebud and Bond Beach, which will be Game Face's match, match of, of the day. day. And this is a ripper, isn't it? it? Is a Huge game down at Ro- Rosebud. Rosebud just have to win, don't they? Rip Snorter. Uh, mm. Last time that uh, Macca went down there, he. He had a good day, didn't he, mate? Hey? Yeah, he played all right. He played all right. <laughs> um, so he likes the ground. Jeez, it's a good game. If Bond Beach are fair income, we've said this a couple of times this yeah. year. Bond Beach are fair income, they'll beat Rosebud down there. Oh, very good against YCW a couple of weeks ago. Well, Mitch Jen played last week, and I don't yeah. think he'll play again, which he's he's uh, an important cog in their midfield, but I think he'll go back to VFL. But I still think Bond Beach will win that game, Dan. I'm going for Rosebud at home. I think they can get the job done. Good on you. Very good. Yeah, I'm going Rosebud with that one. Yeah. Nah, I'm going Rosebud too. Ooh. At home. They're, they're, it's, I know it's a big ground, but Bond Beach's ground yeah. a lot skinnier. Pass players think, though. Though. And it's a big pass players day at Rosebud. We saw what I did to Bond Beach a couple of weeks ago at Galvanised them. I know they had a couple of big milestones. 200 for Jackson Casey, 250 for Macca. It is true. And they found a way. To, going to grounds when they've got a day on. We went to Frankston. They had a yeah. premiership reunion. Mm. And for some reason, I reckon it adds two or three, four goals to a side. Having yeah. that many people there watching and Probably buzzing them yeah. on. They were bloody good against us, yeah, Frankston. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, they were they were pumped up because there was I mean the seventy nine premiership team and yeah. all, good all their other on, past mate. players. What did you think of that, Dan? Uh, well, I'm not capable, obviously. <laughs> uh, and the the last game of the round, Edie Asper at home to Pines, and uh, Pines, of course, have got a few out, but still looking pretty good for mine. I think they'll beat Edie Asper. Oh, that easy. Edith Bell has still got a lot of work to do. Don't worry about that. Oh, they do. Yeah, they do. But they, this won't be one they pinch. No, they won't. Easy. No. Easy ass for us. Yep. Now oh, this... 
I, I, I knew you'd say that. Now, this is, guys, Love the Game Round. The Vic Responsible Gambling Foundation, the Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation, have provided five tickets to the Melbourne v Richmond President's Lunch to a club which has signed up to this charter. And we can tell you that the winner is the Chelsea Junior Football Club. Congratulations to them. And uh, so get behind the idea, get behind the concept, love the game round for this particular weekend of footy in the MP NFL. Lee, it's uh, been great having you in and I hope we're on good terms. Uh, let's shake the hands. Oh, ooh, good on you, good on you, Shannon. Good, good, good to have you with us as well. No. Good, no, we won't. <laughs> not, not doing that with men, remember. Good luck for the rest of the season. And uh, get your game face on. Don't forget our game of the week this week. Paul Wilson heading our coverage. Rosebud and Bond Beach. May the best team win.